Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography. In my last video, which was how to photograph Great Crested Grebes, I'll leave a link to that at the, the end of this video. What I want to do is continue on the theme of water birds or, or waterfowl and what I want to do is look at the egret family. Um, here in the UK, um, about 30 years ago, if you'd seen one of these three birds, uh, you would have been looking at a very rare bird indeed. 30 years later, the egret family are a relatively common group of white herons here in the UK, uh, with probably the, the cattle egret being the rarest of the three. So what I want to do in this video is I want to share with you my approach to photographing egrets. And what we'll do is we'll look at how to identify egrets, where to find egrets, we'll look at some egret behaviour, and then finally what I want to do is share with you my approach to photographing egrets, which due to their all white plumage can be uh, technically a little bit difficult but not too difficult if you know what you're doing and I'll share what I believe are, are, are some good tips on that. So let's go. There are three members of the egret family. There's the cattle egret, the little egret and the great white egret. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at each of them in turn. Okay what we're going to do now is we're going to look at um, the three members of the egret family in turn. Starting off with the, the cattle egret. Uh, the cattle egret is the smallest of the three egrets. Um, it's identifiable by its small neck, it's got a short yellow bill, and it's got yellow legs. Um, the cattle egrets are spending more time in the UK, but as I said, they are um, the smallest and also the rarer of the three members of the egret family, the cattle egret. And here's its call to identify it. Next we're going to look at the, the little egret. Uh, as I said previously, it once was a, a rare bird here in the UK, but it is the most common of the three members of the egret family. The little egret is identifiable by, it's, it's about a medium sized uh, white heron, um, it's got black legs, it's got a, ye a black bill and it's got yellow feet. Um, it can at times be confused at distance with the great white egret, uh, but here's its call as well. Next we have the, the great white egret, which is the largest of the, the egret family. Um, it can be confused at times at distance with the, the little egret, but I'll show you some video following this and you'll see exactly the difference between the size of a great white egret and a little egret. Um, to identify the great white egret, it's about heron sized, so it's similar to the, the grey heron, which is very common here in the UK. Um, it's got a yellow bill and it's got black legs. As of 2021, the great white egret was taken off the, the rare list here in the UK, as it is now, as I've said, a common bird. And here's the great white egret's call. And here we have a, a good comparison between the size of the the great white egret and the little egret. Probably say that the, the great white egret is probably about twice the size of a, a little egret. When it comes to telling the difference between male and females within the, the egret family, all three are very similar. And as much as that, it really is pretty difficult to tell the difference between a male and a female egret. Uh, really, the only noticeable difference is in size. So unless you see the birds actually together, unless you actually see a pair together, it's only really then that you'll be able to tell which one is the male and which one is the female. So next we're going to look at where are you actually going to find egrets. Um, egrets can appear virtually anywhere in the United Kingdom, um, but the, the, the types of habitat that they prefer are things like wetlands, estuaries, harbours and farmland and probably the best place to see them is actually on some noticeable or notable um, nature re reserves through the UK, throughout the UK. It's just a case of going onto um, the, the websites and looking at the recent sightings uh, to see if they're, if they're about. Um, egrets themselves, they, they, they usually forage in uh, open spaces along the edges of lakes uh, and rivers and canals. 
the Cat Ligra is kind of unique, unique in as much as that it prefers uh, farmland where, where cattle gather and what the egrets will do, and I'll explain again later, is that they'll follow the cattle and as the cattle are disturbing the, the, the insects on the ground, the, the, the cattle egrets will feed on them. Moving on to looking at egret behaviour, um, an egret's average lifespan is in the region of about 15 years. Um, the, the birds tend to be solitary in nature, however, as it gets closer to the breeding season, they, they will come together uh, and they, they tend to form monogamous pairs during the breeding season. Early in the breeding season, the, the egrets that start to display plumes of feathers um, on, the, on their backs and, and, and on their sides um, as part of the, the court, courtship display. In fact, these plumes back in the 18th century were considered to be um, as worth as much as, as gold as they were used to adorn the, 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 the hats and the dresses of women during the 18th century. So just a little fact there. When we look at the diet of the, 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 the egret family, it consists mainly of uh, small fish, um, they'll eat amphibians, frogs, newts, etc. and also crustaceans, snails, crayfish uh, and, and, and the like. And they'll also feed on insects like dragonflies and, and damselflies. Uh, as I said, the cattle egret is unique in as much as that um, it will, they will follow and they will actually land on cattle and as the cattle are moving about a field disturbing the insects, the cattle egrets will feed on it. So what I want to do now is just show you uh, a, a clip of uh, how egrets go about fishing. It's beautiful, stunning birds. And again you can see him vigorously shaking his legs and his feet to try and disturb the grip at the bottom any fish or, or food that's around. And just keep with this little egret here. The look of concentration on its face is unbelievable. Its eyesight must be incredible. But what it tends to do is shuffle its feet to disturb the bottom. And then again it's caught something. Here you go. Okay, moving on, we're going to now look at my approach or the, the approach that I take to, to photographing egrets. Um, obviously the white egret is a completely white bird and that in itself can be quite challenging. Um, you, all cameras um, tend to believe that everything is 18% grey so you, you have to be careful about the settings that you have on your camera. Now I shoot with a Canon R5 uh, I'm not going to talk about the, the, the technical details or the settings that are particular to the, the, the Canon R5. What I'm going to talk about is uh, generic settings that I would recommend and three tips that I would recommend for photographing pure white birds, which I said can be quite challenging. Um, tip number one is to shoot in manual and to shoot in raw. Why, you may ask. Well, if you shoot in manual, you've got complete control of the, the, the camera, you can set the aperture, you can set the, 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 the speed, and you can also set the ISO. And you're not leaving the camera to make the decisions on what shade of white the, the bird's going to be. Um, the next thing that I would, the, the second tip that I would give you for shooting uh, purely white birds is to set your camera's highlights or your blinkies uh, to, to show, so that when you take a picture of a bird, uh, you, have, you can have a look at the back of the camera uh, to see if you've blown any of the highlights out and then adjust accordingly and check against the histogram. Now one thing that I've learnt about histograms is that histograms never lie and they're, they're really critical in making sure you, you get the balance of uh, the brightness of the picture correctly. And finally, tip number three is to think about using spot metering. Now, what spot metering does is it measures the light on the subject and not the background. So if you've got a, a white bird uh, against a bright background uh, and you, you're shooting in one of the automatic modes, uh, you're likely to uh, blow the highlights out. Um, but as I said, you need to check your histogram. Spot metering, what it will do is it will just concentrate on the bird itself and it will ignore the background and that way you should get a correct exposure. So, top three tips for setting your camera up for photographing purely white birds is shooting manual and shooting raw. Uh, the reason for raw is so that you can make adjustments in your post-processing and editing. Um, tip number two is set your camera to highlight your, your, your highlights or your blinkies as they're known. 
And finally, tip number three is to choose spot metering. In essence, spot metering uh, exposes the subject and not the background, and that's what you're, you're, you're trying to achieve. Okay, when we're looking at the, um, the, the egret, if we're looking at a stationary bird, um, the, the settings that I would use um, would tend to be, we're talking about a bird that, that's sitting still, and you, you often get good opportunities because egrets are just like herons, they, they'll, they'll stop uh, and they'll remain stationary for quite a while and you can get some good pictures. So my go-to settings are f7.1, one one thousandth of a second, and I also always shoot an auto ISO. So for a stationary bird it would be f7.1, one one thousandth of a second, and set it on that auto ISO. When it comes to photographing egrets in flight, egrets aren't the, the, the fastest of birds, so you don't need to be using really high shutter speeds. So the settings that I would use for photographing egrets in flight would be I'd set an aperture of about f.8. That just gives me that little bit more depth of field over uh, a stationary bird. Uh, I would set the speed at one two thousandth of a second. As I said, they're not the fastest of birds. And again, I would leave it in auto ISO for photographing egrets in flight. What I want to do now is I want to just show you some of my favourite photographs that I've taken of egrets and uh, a little bit of video as well. So enjoy. for watching Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph egrets. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have filming it uh, and going out into the English countryside and actually photographing these beautiful looking birds which I'm sure you'll agree they truly are. All I would ask is that if you've liked the video I could ask you to hit the like button. Also if you've not subscribed to my channel Kevin Hartley Photography I could I ask you to consider doing so. It's completely free, it doesn't cost anything and it just keeps giving me that incentive to keep coming out here to beautiful nature reserves like Beestock Nature Reserve here in Nottinghamshire uh, to photograph wildlife and nature. So until the next time, stay safe, take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now. Oh, I see you standing there. Oh, you're fine, thank you.